Welcome to the age of hyperconnectivity. Digitization has touched every aspect of the world, the life of every citizen, the operation of every business, and the governance of the state. We are living in the dawn of a new revolution. The steam engine allowed for mechanical production over 200 years ago, marking the first industrial revolution. Electricity, on the other hand, made mass production possible and created massive avenues for commercialization, marking the second industrial revolution. And the third used information technology to pave the way for automated production, heralding unprecedented levels of economic growth. So what is the fourth industrial revolution? Digitization. But how does employment, government's ever-growing challenge, fit into the fourth industrial revolution narrative? How does digitization play a role here? Why is it important for government to address this? Here are some stats. The most demanded specialties today didn't exist 10 or even 5 years ago. In fact, according to the World Economic Forum, 65% of the children in primary schools will end up having job types that don't exist today. A study from the University of Oxford showed some jobs had a high probability of suffering because of digitization. Recreational therapists and doctors are in the safe zone, as the probability of being replaced is less than 1%, while the probability reaches up to 17% for firefighters, 43% for economists. The jobs most in danger according to the study were accountants, 94%, and telemarketers, 99%. While many professions will be replaced by AI, Sharing economies will continue, with technology companies taking considerable market share from traditional industries, like Uber with the taxi industry, Airbnb with the hotel industry. Countries that have relied on low-skilled manufacturing for decades will need to grow the services, technology and healthcare sectors, as well as a highly skilled manufacturing sector. The mismatch between growth needs and the skills available is the biggest impediment to growth that government has to address. The International Labour Organization estimates that global unemployment is at a record high of 200 million people around the world. But unemployment figures alone aren't enough to see the whole picture. McKinsey estimates that 30 to 40 percent of the global workforce is underutilized, which includes unemployed, part-time employed, and inactive participants in the labour market. Equally alarming is ILO's estimates that 60% of the global workforce, which amounts to 1.7 billion people, is in vulnerable employment positions. Poor education, misalignment between current jobs and the skill sets available, and slow economic growth, which hinders adequate job creation, are all responsible for this vulnerability. Unfilled jobs lead to more growth impediments, which lead to less job creation and more job seekers who tap into existing resources to thrive, instead of supporting value creation needed for growth. Let's not forget regional integration. Labor mobility within regions will become the norm. The EU experience, for example, has brought many economic benefits, but also created waves of migration within the region. Labor market dynamics will see dramatic changes in the next few years as well. A country's growth and competitiveness will be determined by its talent rather than capital. The employment landscape in the world is rapidly changing. These changes require collaborative policymaking based on real-time information from the job market, while involving governments, employers, educators, and citizens at large. Such collaboration is possible now more than ever before due to digitization, big data, and AI. The same tools that are creating the employment gap can be used to bridge it. That's why governments need to act by focusing on digitization, mobility, big data, and cloud computing. From regulation reform to developing lifelong learning opportunities and creating a talent-conducive lifestyle, governments have to make the right investments where people can connect, communicate, collaborate, and co-innovate, creating the jobs of the future.